Hi everybody. Today we're gonna learn how to make a rag wreath. Do you like it? Let me see your jo yours, Joy. My daughter Joy is here from Missouri and she's got hers almost done. I'll show it like that and it looks like it's done. But isn't that gorgeous? And that's just with pieces of fabric. And that way you don't have to mess with the all of that uh, mesh stuff. And you can, you can actually just use um, scraps. But here's the back of it. But I'm gonna let her tell about hers, but I'm going to tell you how, the, what you need and how, um, how much. So um, get you a wreath form from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And this is a 14 inch wreath. They also have these small ones. I have not made, used these to make a wreath yet, but I figured if I had extra um, strips of cut, maybe I would make one of these. But I think these would make like a good candle holder. You know, put, put the, your decorations and put your candle in the middle. So what you need for a 14 inch wreath how many, uh, how many yards did you end up saying that you had? One and three quarter. Okay. Joy has cut one and three quarter yards. And I think that is going to take approximately one and a half yards. I would probably buy two yards total because then you can have some extra to make your bow, your big bushy bowl, bow. So what you do is you take your fabric and you cut approximately one inch slits. And as you can see, some are one inch and some are a little more. It's not a big deal. But then you take that fabric and you tear it. And then you have all of these little string things that you're gonna have to get rid of and then I just take it and I have a yardstick here and I measure it so it's gonna I'm gonna end up with one that's um, about one inch by nine inches and you can make them fatter if you want if you want to make one and a half or two inches and I don't get real stickler for um, the length you don't want it too crazy off but when you start pulling tearing your fabric you're gonna find that the probably the first um, rip you make is going to be it's going to be I call it the correction rip because one end might be real skinny and one real fat and so I just toss that away but anyway so if you have two yards of fabric then you'll be good. And see, I'm doing four colors. I've got this red and black, polka dot, white, red, and black. So I'm gonna show you how to tie them on to the wreath frame, and then I'm going to turn it over to Joy, and she's gonna show you what she has done so far. So you take your, your fabric and bring it about even and then you just tie a double knot and you do and if you have a printed fabric you can kind of finagle it so you do the the two outside rungs then we're going to do the two inside rungs i mean yeah this inside and then we're going to do these two so i keep my my fabric strips in in a line and then I can just grab the next one. So my next one is white. And so I will tie it on the middle, the, the very inside and the next one. And this um, white fabric was an old sheet. So it's really raggy. And the rest of it is just regular fabric. But if you have, you know, a partial, a fourth of this, a fourth of that, or whatever. 
All right. So I've got my three tied. These two, these two, and then the middle two. Let me hold those like this so you can see. And then we're just gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna do the two outside and then the inside, the two outside and the inside. And I'm gonna try to make sure that I don't end up with two of the same color right beside each other. So if you were only using three colors, you can use even one color if you want. I have made them with uh, muslin. And uh, the one I made that is really gorgeous is I made um, with um, just kind of a brown muslin. And then I had a bolt of uh, lace. So every once in a while I intersperse some lace in it. And it's very, very pretty. So I'll, I'm gonna go one more of each color. And then you just slide them as you're going. So that was red, this one will be white. I'm gonna see if I can put this here so perhaps you can see better what I'm doing. Okay, my next color is red and it's gonna be in the middle. And I have two pieces, I don't need two pieces. And so as you're going along, you kind of have to pull strings off even though you did that already. I told you that you cut them into nine inch lengths, I'm pretty sure I did. Now this looks like this is gonna work just fine as far as um, keeping my colors from being side by side. I believe. Okay, so now I've done two of each color so far. This is the back and then this is the front. And you can tell that it's going to be cute as a button. I'm going to have to make a different video when I do the um, the bow. So now I'm going to give it over to Joy and she's going to just, you can just watch her tie her stuff on and she can talk if she wants to. So here we come. First of all, say hi, Joy. Hello. <laughs> all right, Joy, can you look and see if they can see? Uh, yeah, they can see. Is it in your way? No. Okay. <clears throat> so this is my main fabric. It's got these llamas on it. And I decided I wanted to, to do a spring slash summer wreath. So I pulled all my colors from this. And I kind of have an order in my colors over there. Um, and then I'm just putting the white ones every so often. But I found after doing it for a couple of them that I need 13 of each tie. So I'll have 13 right here, 13 right here, and then 13 in the middle. So I need 39 of these strips per section. So I kind of figured it out mathematically how many I would need to make sure I had enough. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six sections. So Joy's here a bit visiting from Missouri, and she's my crafty daughter. So we like to do crafts together. So every so often I'll pick up a white one and I'll put it in here. Cause I cut more of my white. Since I wanted it to be my main, I cut more of it than any of my other colors. And it's handy to look back because I flip it over sometimes and I look at the back so I can see what colors I've done more and then I can switch them up if I need to. So like the last time I had a, a green in the center so I want to put it someplace else this time.
This is a really good craft if you can find somebody who has old fabric that they don't want. Especially if you can find fabric that matches your color scheme that you're trying to achieve. Mine, I am going am making for a friend for her kitchen. She had uh, curtains and these are the colors of her curtains. So I'm hoping she can find a place to put this. If she can't, then whatever. <laughs> I'm having fun making it. But I know she loves wreaths, so. This is probably if you buy, have to buy your fabric, and you bought two yards of fabric total, that Walmart is probably about $4 a yard. So you would have about nine or t less than $10 in your uh, wreath. But that's not if you, that's not counting any uh, lights or anything like that. If you put a, sometimes you put a, something hanging on it or at Easter time, you put Easter eggs on it or whatever, you know, bunnies, whatever. That's, of course, extra. But just for this main part of it is about nine, ten dollars $10. I'm glad I have a daughter that likes to craft <laughs> when she should be studying. <laughs> So Joy only has how many sections left? Um, one more. Wow. So now that I'm it's getting harder to tie right here, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna count these, and then I'm from here to here, and then I'm going to squish them together if I need to. But you always work most from the front. And it seems kind of, kind of counterintuitive to tie around two, but if you don't, then it slips around, the, your fabric will slip around to the back. And you don't want that, you want your fabric on the front. And you said you, you end up with 13 of each color on each ring? Uh, not of each color, I have 13 ties per. 13. Like 13 here on the outside, 13 on the inside, 13. Yeah. Okay. So this is 11. So I've got to do two more, two more sets. And then it'll be full. Well, depending on how big you make your ties or your That's strips, true. it could change. If you made them uh, wider, it wouldn't take as much. But they're also harder to tie because I know some of mine have accidentally cut a little wide and they're harder to tie. Right. But you don't want them less than an inch because they um, look more like string. So you got to hit that happy medium somewhere. Well, when I get done with my section, I will show you what I've accomplished so far. One that I think would be pretty is um, to use like muslin and then that pillow ticking. You know what pillow ticking is? Mm -mm. See those stripes? Yeah. That's pillow tick. Oh. So that would be pretty, I think. Make it really country looking. I don't know if I want to add lights or not. Right now the light only lights I have are tall. So I probably don't want to add those. 
but I don't know if I want to look for black or white. I think, well, maybe I have some others. I don't know. This is my last one for this section. Sometimes it can get hard towards the end to get your yeah. fingers in there. That is true. Once you got them all tied, you can kind of space them out a little bit, but they should be pretty tight in there. And then it starts to come together. Let me see how many I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I got a ways to go. Here, do you want them? I can. <laughs> You're tired of them looking at yours. She feels on the spot. I don't want to make this huge, terrible long, but see how much I've got done. This is what um, Joy said, 13 on each row, and I have nine. So, got a ways to go. So, what was the last one I tied? Okay, I'm ready for a middle one. My last one was white, so red goes in the middle. And you can also, let me show you, you can do, I can't think what this is, what this knot is called, but it's where you fold it in half and go around. I don't know if that's called a slip knot or, no, that's not a slip knot. Is it even a knot though? Because you're not really tying it. It is a special kind of lark's, lark's head knot or something. Because I know you use it in a macrame. But anyway, Joy felt like, she didn't want to do that, and I like the way hers looked, so I'm doing the same thing she's doing. So I didn't need that black one. I'm done with my last section. Though. Cool. You told me not to do it. No, I just meant till we were videoing. Uh oh. And you can do it now. So, like, I got a little bugger here on my my piece of fabric, so I think I'm going to set that aside. Because it don't look pretty. Not that a rag looks pretty. Oh, no, I think these look pretty. It is pretty. And then if you fluff it up. And did you know that if, you, um, if you're if you using the mesh stuff, you can spray it with hairspray to help keep it from uh, shedding? Mm -hmm. You know, the it sheds so badly. But... The fuller you make it, the better these will stand up. So like if you have this, that's all I did on a section, it would not be as fluffy and stuff as it yeah. can be. Yeah. So let's see, red. Red and black. I don't really particularly like the ones with that are printed like this because they're printed on this side and not on that side. Yeah. So. I kind of prefer the solid colors, but I was trying to be pretty. But I wanted to show you um, what my friend's curtains look like. So I took, this is the bottom part of one of her curtains. So I took that apart. I took the hem out and everything. And I'm going to cut this along with all the other colors, probably... I'm probably going to cut about two inch strips and when I make her bow. And so I'll put this in the bow so it'll match and it'll tie it all together with her in her kitchen. So I think she'll be excited and like it. And if she don't, I guess she can throw it in the trash. <laughs> but I know she likes wreaths, so she should like it. I do like to craft with friends or daughters. I'd rather do that than do it by myself. So I'm getting close to the to the divider bar. So it does get a little bit harder to tie your stuff on. So you just have to finagle it till it works for you. Make sure you have a trash can by you. And also, when you're doing these rag ones, just plan on getting your whole front side covered in 
um, strings because you will have them. So let me see where I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Getting close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do you do with your extra strips if, if you have them? I don't know. Do you not use those to make the bow? No, because I use long strips. I use the full length strip for the bow because I like my bows to be long. and Not that I'm like a professional bow tire or anything like that at all, but I kind of halfway made a bow that looked kind of cool so I'll have to go look at it and try to do it again but you can see how you could do a color scheme if you have a room you're trying to match or um, you just have a particular color that you like you can certainly do that with this deal. And this is a very uh, low skill type of thing. You're tying a knot. You're tearing fabric, cutting it to a length, and tying a knot. You know, it's not like you have to be highly skilled to do it. Maybe a little bit of artistic ability helps. See, I'm getting to my divider thing, so it's getting a little bit harder to do this. Let me see where I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I gotta have one more on each set in black. Okay, red. So I'm going to put one in each of them so that I, because this middle one, you kind of have a tendency to get less. Did you find that you had less in your middle one? Nope, I have 13 on every one of them. Well, maybe it's just me. Probably is. So when I get done tying this, this is how long this video is going to be, because don't want to bore you out of your gourd too much. But I'll come back when I'm making the bow and show you how I make it and how I attach it. So right now I gotta get this last one on. And when you're kind of fumble fingers like me, that could be a trick. But you want it tight and filled because you don't want a sparse wreath. And I will tell you, too, nine inches, you think, oh, well, maybe I'll do 10 or 11 or 12 inches. No, you don't. Well, you can try it, but I can tell you that it'll flop. Flop over and it won't be as full looking. So you're going to be constantly, until you're done, pulling out these little extra strings. But there's one section. So I'm one-sixth of the way done. And you could, you know, do three-fourths of it. What, what you could do is there's six sections. So if you want to do a patriotic one, you could do, I would probably do one, I'd probably do four sections in red and white, and then two sections in blue and white for kind of the corner of the flag. But anyway, that's all for now. I don't know if we're going to do the um, bow today or tomorrow, but we'll let you know. Thanks for joining. Make sure that you put, give me a thumbs up so I know you watched it and you, you were able to stand the boredom through the whole thing. We'll talk to you later. Bye.